Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Bub Light. You have two men in your life here. You're like Bub. <laughs> trying to shave. You're all drunk. <laughs> Today we are featuring 1981's Night School. Night School was directed by Ken Hughes. He did Casino Royale, the, uh, the original, the original yeah. one, yeah, with Peter Sellers, and uh, he did Chitty Chitty Bang Bang too, just to <laughs> mention another one. Leonard Mann is in this, and he was in Flowers in the Attic. Rachel Ward plays the main female lead in this. Drew Snyder is in this. He was in Firestarter, Commando. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother my friend, he's dead tired. <laughs> <laughs> Let off some steam, Bennett. <laughs> Night school starts off in this playground. One of the teachers, Anne, is kind of seeing all the kids off to make sure they get picked up properly by their parents. The last kid is let off and Anne is just kind of on this merry-go-round. This weird motorcycle person shows up, kind of like in Nightmare Beach. Right, yeah. Got the helmet on and the leather suit. Starts turning this carousel while she's on it. This curved knife, she's got to dodge it. He's spinning this carousel and finally, <laughs> They find the body first. A couple of yards over, they find the head, and the head is in this bucket of water. That's a lot like this case that came up last week, too. It's actually the second murder. The main detective, Judd, talks to Anne's boss, and she doesn't know Anne too well, but she does know that she's been attending night school at the college. Then Judd goes to the college. He walks in on this lecture by Professor Millet. He's giving a lecture on anthropology and he's showing all these slides of pictures he took on a trip to like Africa. The lecture's over and the professor instantly starts to give <laughs> Judd shit. Like, what are you doing interrupting my lectures? Like, you didn't interrupt nothing. You just slid in quietly yeah. and didn't say anything. You just stood in the back. So he talks to Professor Millet and his assistant, Eleanor. They didn't know her too well, but they did say, well, Kim knew her pretty well, and Kim's kind of packing up, and he starts talking to Kim. He said, well, I, I didn't know Anne too well either, but, you know, she did have this boyfriend she was always talking about. I kind of suspect he was probably having an affair with her, maybe an older man. After school, Eleanor, who is the assistant to Millet, goes to like the local diner. She starts talking to the waitress. Like, oh, I heard lots of things about Professor Millet. Uh, he gets around a lot. He's a and, bit of a hound dog, yeah. that guy. But I wouldn't turn him away either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she leaves the diner, and the busboy there, who has kind of been watching her the whole time, leaves. He just abandons his yeah. ship, and he starts following her home. Played out great, where he's always kind of like, whenever she stops to look by her shoulder, he peeks into the shadows. Eventually, he follows her right home. So Eleanor gets in the shower, of course. You, <laughs> yeah. you see everything, of course. <laughs> she can kind of faintly hear someone like ringing the doorbell and trying to get into the apartment. Somebody actually is in the apartment. In the bathroom. Yeah, and just moves the curtain over and it's Professor Millet. And she's really happy to see him. So happy that they end up getting into the shower together. <laughs> With a bunch of paint or, or something. <laughs> some bowl of fruit or, or something. <laughs> some sick ritual in the tub. Yeah. Like. <laughs> we see a shot of this aquarium tank. This person gets out and she takes her scuba gear off and it's Kim. That curved knife, that yeah. kookery knife, dragging it against the chain link fence. It comes like out of that locker yeah. like, <laughs> and starts slashing at her. I like how she leaves that blood trail yeah. along all the nice white tiles. There's people looking in the aquarium watching the, you know, the sea turtles yeah. and stuff and there's the head that kind of comes <laughs> down slowly yeah. and bobs down. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the diner, Eleanor has come back. Professor Millet follows her in, and we learn that Eleanor is pregnant. For three months already. Yeah, exactly. So she's been keeping it kind of a secret. Oh, that's why you've been acting so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An asshole. Uh, that night, the diner is closing up. The waitress is, she was tasked with, you know, putting the chairs and the tables. And somebody barges in and starts chasing her down and throwing the chairs around, yeah. chases her into the kitchen, downstairs. 
and outside. The killer's all right in front of her outside <laughs> yeah, after like yeah. super quick. The diner opens up uh, that morning and those two fucking construction workers come in. Oh, come on. <laughs> Let's get some coffee here. Uh, they're all demanding. The guy, the guy just <laughs> opened. He just walked in the door. They're like yeah. behind him. Like let him turn on the lights first. Yeah, he's like, he's all, he's like, I, I only got two hands here, guys. Come on. <laughs> Can we get some hot food here? Come on. Come on. <laughs> so he's like, I got some stew for you. You want some stew? Oh, that's good. So he pours him some stew and he started eating it. And the one guy's like, ah, he's like, what's this? It's all his hair. <laughs> but they keep and eating. The other guy's like, oh, yeah, oh, this is real good. <laughs> yeah. Because of the hair, the chef like pours out that giant pot of stew into another pot to see what the hell is in it. No, there's nothing. He goes to pull the bung out of the sink. And as the water's draining, he sees the waitress's head oh, show. I love that shot. Detective Judd and his partner Taj, they've been suspecting Gary, the guy that followed Eleanor home. Taj starts to kind of stake him out. Judd goes back to Professor Millet's house to kind of get more clues and to ask more questions. Nobody's there and he just kind of barges he in. Walks in, yeah. Like some asshole, like you can't do that. He sees a bunch of like anthropology books on the table of like all those ritual headhunters in like, you know, South America, yeah. Africa. And there's all these skulls and everything. Yeah. And that's where we're gonna end it because there's a lot more that happens with the characters and there's a lot more that happens with the investigation. And there's a few more kills too. And a few more twists and turns. Some of the best things about this movie is the dynamic between all the characters. Yeah. And how they all work and weave together and there's all these different relationships they have right? yeah yeah exactly they're they're, they're quite deep right yeah, yeah um and they're really fleshed out a lot of the the main side characters feed in perfectly to the yeah. story like like the dean right yeah one of the girls is seduced by millet she complains to the dean and then the dean brings her to her apartment and then fucking seduces her too yeah like you bitch which is like yeah i love that kind of like dynamic and it's like well this poor girl is being taken advantage of no matter where she turns yeah right? you yeah know? There's a lot of subject matter in this movie that the movie deals with. Right, yeah. It's more than just a slasher. Exactly. It's a very smart movie. And one of them is like how power corrupts, right? Power in high places. The way they start off the movie, you think that it's kind of a commentary on how women are being suppressed by men a bit because Millet's taking advantage of all the girls. Yeah. But then when you find out that the Dean, who is a woman, is doing the same thing, it's kind of like saying, oh, it's not just a man-woman thing. It's a human nature. and right. People are either, they're just bad. Yeah, exactly. You don't need to be a woman or a man. It's just, you're, you're bad either way. Because women are being killed and being beheaded, the cops naturally suspect a man. Right. They're like, oh, yeah, well, he's the killer. You know, it must be him. He's a pervert. Yeah, they yeah. suspect that poor Gary, yeah. too, right? Because he's maybe a little weird and yeah. he's eccentric. And there's a double standard there because these guys really aren't doing their job properly. Yeah. They, they just naturally come to a conclusion, right? Yeah. The culture clash too in this. These headhunting rituals in different countries. Somebody in North America that's interpreting the, their own way, yeah. their own way, their own methods on yeah. this, right? Which isn't seen the same way by outsiders right yeah. which is cool all this being done over there is okay but you bring it over here and yeah now you're a criminal exactly it's not <laughs> yeah. right yeah another great thing about this movie is the kills they're awesome and it's not because they're like super gory it's because like first of all they're kind of fun and inventive but you don't actually see any beheadings which is neat you just always see the yeah and but that's it then it cuts and later on you see the aftermath you see the head in the aquarium or whatever and that effect of that head looks great <laughs> exactly that's yeah. all you need yeah. you know you don't need a lot of gore and blood right to get yeah. the effect across and the way that they, they build the tension too is is really neat because you know that first kill she's on that merry-go-round thing and he's Spinning her, like, right, ah. and the, the knife is kind of he's kind getting of, close. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, it's pretty tense. The acting is really good in this movie too, with the exception of the actor who plays Judd. He's kind of not so great. It's kind of like yeah. uh, it's a little cheesy, and even the way like even the way they develop his character, like 
he kind of sucks yeah, as, a, as a detective. Like, he makes all this effort to go down to someone's house and <laughs> get into their house to question them and, like, ask them two things and just leave. Yeah, like, he's like, okay, that's all right. Don't you want to do more digging <laughs> here? Don't you want to ask more questions, especially when you suspect somebody, right? Yeah, exactly. One thing that really helps this movie, too, is the score. Yeah. And uh, it's done by Brad Fidel, who did The Terminator. Yeah. And a few <laughs> other uh, movies we've covered over the years, right? That's right, yeah. yeah. As soon as someone's being stalked, that synth score yeah. comes in. The dun -dun 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 -dun. Yeah, yeah. It's like... Hmm, that sounds a lot like the Terminator chase scene. Yeah, the you know? tunnel chase, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this movie does have kind of a neat twist at the end. Kind of two. In, yeah, two twists, in fact, if you want to really count them. Night School is like a really good mix between 80s slasher and murder mystery whodunit. I think it, it takes both things and meshes them together very well. It does, yeah, and it flips the whole dynamic, right? Yeah. The whole male-female dynamic right on its head. Yeah, which is nice. On yeah. its head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and until next time, keep drinking. Well, it's not worth losing your head over. You got it. <laughs> <laughs>